Okay, so I meant to upload this on Halloween, but I made two hour and a half long videos in October, so I was kind of burnt out of working. So here it is, the video I mentioned being made at the very end of the Cryptid Iceberg. That was supposed to come out on Halloween, but it's now coming out on whatever date it says below. Now, if you don't know what a childhood trauma video is, it's it's not what the title, like it seems, it's not that serious. It's basically just what scared me a ton of when I was a kid. Things that impacted me and stuck with me all these years. This was started a couple years ago, and nobody really does these anymore, but I don't actually care. I've always wanted to do one of these, so I'm doing it. The Orkin Termite Commercial. In the late 2000s, a series of commercials began airing advertising Orkin, a company that specialized in getting rid of termites, ants, and all those kinds of insects. The only reason I remember this company is because of the commercials. This one in particular. I got it. I was wondering if I could use your phone. My car broke down a few blocks over and... Is that Oak? I wanted to call my brother-in-law. What? Bugs run in, Orkin keeps them out. Don't just call an exterminator. Call an expert, the Orkin Man. He'll conduct a free termite inspection and help keep your home protected from termites and pests. Orkin, keeping pests in their place. This scared the hell out of me when I was a kid. The way he talks like he's trying to get inside, but he doesn't want to barge in, even though, I mean, let's be real here, this giant termite can easily take this dude down. It gave me like a stranger danger vibe in a, like a weird way. Like if a kid opened the door, this big ass termite was going to take him or something. Honestly, I, I can still see why I was afraid of this back when I first saw it. I don't think the intention was to be like a stranger danger like thing, because that's kind of a weird thing. I don't really know what they were thinking, honestly. Though I will admit, the termite just kind of chilling in the truck is kind of a funny image now. <laughs> Chef Boyardee, Tame the Beast. I actually used this commercial in my last Iceberg video, which is where I remembered how terrified this commercial made me as a kid. It like reawakened a memory. of Chef Boyardee can tame the beast in you. I remember seeing this ad when I was watching Nick and Knight years and years ago, which would terrify just about any kid, honestly. Imagine laying in bed and you're watching George Lopez and suddenly this comes on. It's not even really comedic, it's just like a werewolf-like monster scarfing down a can of ketchup sauce and cold Kmart pasta while like stalking around a campground. It's just, I don't know, I don't know what they were going for here. Okay, no, I mean, I get what they were going for, but this was just a little too scary for eight-year-old me. Another aspect of why this terrified me was probably just the sounds of the werewolf. Like, imagine if you woke up with the TV still on, and the first thing you heard as you opened your eyes was... Is it silly? Yeah. But I'd argue it's still pretty scary for an eight-year-old, or however old I was. All grown up, is he or isn't he? So this is probably the dumbest one. Actually, no, not, not probably. This is the dumbest one. I don't really have an excuse for this. See, when I was a kid, I had like this small box TV in my room that I'd use to watch Nickelodeon or Cartoon Network at like 5 in the morning. Doing so, I watched a ton of shows that weren't aired often. For example, this is the only reason why I've seen every episode of Rugrats Preschool Days. I think I'm one of the three people out there that's seen every episode of the show on TV. Also saw a lot of Pahukan Battle Brawlers in Chalk Zone, and a really, really obscure I think anime. All I remember was that like there was some kind of tournament going on, and there was like a skeleton monster or something. He was like he was like the big bad, and they were trying to, and they were trying to like transport or like teleport themselves to the world where the tournament was going. I don't I don't I don't know. I I, I think I'm I think I'm just being stupid. Anyways, one show that regularly aired at this time was All Grown Up, the sequel to one of my favorite kid cartoons, Rugrats. Though I actually really hated this show as a kid, and I I still do. I think it's just just the worst. But I watched it because, I don't know, why, why not, I guess. And one episode stuck out. Well, actually, it's, that's a lie. Two stuck out. The other one being when they flash back to Tommy when he was just a baby, and then almost drowns in a river. You ever wanted to see Tommy Pickles almost drown? Well, there you go. But the episode I want to talk about is the very ending of the Season 2 episode, Is He or Isn't He? Or throughout the episode, future InfoWars host Dill Pickles has an imaginary friend named Izzy. He tries to convince everyone is real. 
And throughout the episode, you're meant to be like, oh, is he's fake, he's not actually real. But in the very last scene, this happens. For some reason, the fact that the afterlife is confirmed to exist in the Rugrats universe destroyed my eight-year-old brain. That's the only thing I can really say about this. Looking back at it, it's not scary at all, except for the fact that, I guess, a uh, ghost has just been watching the entire cast of these characters for God knows how long, and if ghosts are real, like, I don't think they are, but let's say they are real, they can just watch you whenever you're doing anything. And uh, that idea just terrified me as a kid. It didn't exactly help that I saw this at, like, five in the morning. Shriek. Of the mutilated. So this is a video I've been trying to find for almost a decade. I originally saw this exact video in the late 2000s and it scared the hell out of me to the point where I had nightmares about it for weeks. Here I'll play for the scene for you now. This scene is from a movie called Shriek of the Mutilated, and yeah, it's not very scary. At all, even. In fact, it's actually kind of funny, and uh, it turns out this film has a decently sized fan base who like it for being so bad it's good. But as a kid, the idea of seeing this monster standing in the distance, and then like suddenly sprinting towards me was terrifying. I've always had a problem with things chasing me, like I've always found the idea really scary, and I think this video might have had something to do with me developing that fear. That's or just a common thing to be afraid of when something's charging at you. I'm thinking it's the latter. Another example of like this kind of thing is, uh, is the uh, Adult Swim short, uh, unedited footage of a bear that won't sequence in like the middle of the road. I I, I don't like I don't like that short. I mean I, I do I do it's a great short. I just I don't like it's scary. <laughs> uh, I don't like watching it. But anyways, to wrap this part up, I think what made it so scary to me is how it keeps cutting back and forth between the girl and the monster. As a kid, you really get the sense of fear she's in. And that final shot of the monster breaking in, the fact that it cuts off, like, what happened? That just kind of makes your brain go, like, what, what, what could have happened, you know? It's almost like the fear of the unknown. I don't know. The Haunting Hour. Don't think about it. This is a film from 2007 that I've only seen twice. Or, I've seen once and a, a, a tenth? Once and a tenth? Is it good? I, I have no idea. Probably not. Maybe. You see, I don't remember a single thing about this movie outside of one horrifying scene that traumatized me as a kid. So there's this scene that's roughly in the middle of the film, I think like 50 minutes in, and it's just a dude who stumbles upon this. <laughs> It doesn't exactly help that this happens almost immediately after a scene where like a little kid gets stalked and abducted by this exact monster in his room. I first saw this scene on Halloween, like I turned the TV on after trick or treating, and this was the first thing that started playing. And so immediately I was like, nah, I I I'm good, I I'm good. Turned it off, and then had nightmares for the next like two, three weeks about it. I actually didn't even know what the film was called for almost a decade. Actually, it's not, it's not true. It wasn't like a decade. It was more like, like six years. Because in 2014, I saw the film for the first and only time in full. And when I got to that scene, my brain like exploded. Like all the neurons in my brain were firing off going, Oh shit, this is the scene. This is the, this is the movie. And to be honest, while the effects aren't that great, I can totally see why like seven, eight-year-old me was just beyond terrified of the sequence. I mean, look at this thing. Sure, I mean, it looked that great now, but a giant like weird monster abducting kids and wrapping up in like this weird kind of spider web thing cocoon it's just not good not good 
You know what's even worse? I guarantee you there's at least three people out there who saw this when they were kids, and it woke something up in them. And that, my friends, is scarier than any fictional monster. Finding Nemo. All right, so before I begin with this one, I just want I just want to let people know that I was really little when this happened. Like four years old, so just give four-year-old me a break. One of my earliest memories is watching Finding Nemo when suddenly the Barracuda shows up to murder Marlon's wife. Girl Marlon. Okay, actually, does she have a name? Oh, Coral. God damn, that Barracuda killed her and 399 babies? Dude was hungry. Anyways, as the Barracuda attacked her, I remember running out of the room terrified, and I refused to watch the rest of the film for a few hours. I think it was just the really ominous shot of the Barracuda just floating in the middle of the ocean that got to me. It just gave four-year-old me this intense feeling of dread. And you know, four-year-olds don't really take the whole idea of insane feelings of dread very well. Lost Tapes Zombie Opener Lost Tapes is a show that terrified me as a kid. For those that don't know, Lost Tapes was a found footage horror series made by Animal Planet in the late 2000s. A normal episode of a group of people just hanging out, you know, doing their thing, and then suddenly a cryptid or a monster shows up and usually the episode ends with everyone dying. There's a bunch of episodes that scared me, like the Windigo episode, the Poltergeist episode, the Vampire episode, the New Jersey Devil episode, and the Zombie episode, which is the one I want to talk about. You see, every episode of Lost Tapes opens with a small sequence of somebody encountering the monster before the title sequence starts and the show actually begins. And this is where the zombie episode peaks, which says something with the rest of the episode's quality, because, I mean, if, if your thing peaks in the first minute, that, that's not a good sign. You see, I loved zombies as a kid, but I knew they weren't real. I, I mean, in humans. Uh, Woody Allen Ant, on the other hand, you might need to watch out. But this opening scene showing a voodoo zombie just casually strolling up, devouring a woman, really hit me. Go back inside! What are you doing out here? Go back inside! Go on, honey! No, Malcolm, no, baby! Go back inside! Go! Go! That's it! Go, honey! Go! Go! Go back! Go, baby! Go back inside! <laughs> It was pretty realistic for a kid like me at the time, and it never dawned on me that zombies could be created from voodoo. You see, I was religious as a kid, so this made me think like, oh my god, it's possible. And that really stuck with me, even to the point where I was convinced that this was an actual video. Nowadays, I can still see why this scared me, but it doesn't do anything for me anymore. The Haunting Hour, Big Yellow. Arl Science The Haunting Hour was a spin-off show of the film that I briefly talked about earlier. It was an anthology show like Goosebumps, and it's actually really good. Well, I mean, for kids, you know, not for adults, but one episode that terrified me when I was a kid, or I guess at this point, a preteen, was the season two episode, Mascot. This episode's about two kids trying to replace their school's mascot called Big Yellow. And for the most part, this episode's not really scary. I mean, sure, for kids, I'm sure Big Yellow was terrifying looking. I remember being kind of intimidated by him, but he's just not, he's just kind of silly now. But anyways, over the course of the episode, the kids realize that Big Yellow isn't actually a person in a costume, but an actual living creature that might be a prehistoric marsupial? Thanks, Haunting Hour Wiki. What made this episode stand out to me as a kid, though, wasn't Big Yellow himself, it was the ending. You see, the ending scene is one of the kids being flat-out vored by Big Yellow, and the next day, Big Yellow stares down the other kid as the other kid realizes what happened. All while the kid inside of Big Yellow is screaming as he's being dissolved. It's a really messed up ending that stuck with me for a while. The T-Rex roar from walking with dinosaurs. So it was a little bonus scare, or, or I guess not really scare, because I wasn't scared of this, but it may be really uncomfortable, is from walking with dinosaurs. Now, I absolutely love walking with dinosaurs. The entire franchise, even. Every single installment. Oh, okay, maybe not this one. That one kind of stunk. 
Ooh, no, especially not that one. Remember, they can smell fear. Uh, sorry, that's not fear. Juniper, are you okay? I think I just stepped in some fear. Regardless, the original series will always hold a special place in my heart. But there was one aspect about it that made me really uncomfortable when watching. It wasn't the badgers eating their newborns. It wasn't when the big pterodactyl died without getting laid. It wasn't when Big Al died, rest in peace, King. And it wasn't even from the sequel series when a little baby bird got devoured by ants live. You know what? That one did. I, I didn't like that one. That would. <laughs> that's okay. That's an honorable mention. That may be very. That still makes me a little weird. I don't like watching that. But in the final episode of Walking with Dinosaurs, when the T Rex discovers that one of her kids is dead, she lets out this horrible, horrible cry that may be really uncomfortable. I don't really know what it is. Like, it still makes me feel uncomfortable. It just sounds so real. Like an actual animal is an emotional pain. It's just horrible. Like in a good way, like it's a great job. It just, I don't know, it just makes me feel weird. And so that's really it. I'm sure there's a lot of other things that scared me as a kid, but those are the ones that really stuck out to me when looking back at all the things that scared me. Were you at all scared of these things when you were a kid? If you like, you know, saw them? Maybe you weren't, maybe you were tougher than I was, probably were. What were some things that you were scared of as a kid? Like, you know, like little films and whatever. I know that sounds like the, the like the really generic YouTuber thing where it's like, you know, leave a comment below. But I do genuinely want to know, like, I'm kind of curious because I, I like these, these kind of topics are interesting to me. Things that aren't really that scary when you look back on them, but when you saw them as a kid, like, you know, terrified the hell out of you. So yeah, there's not really much else for me to add. This was just like a little quick little video I wanted to do. Um, happy late Halloween, very late Halloween. Um, Godzilla Iceberg's coming out this month, along with another really short, well, may end up not being a short video, but it, it, it's an easy video to make, so it, they'll, it's short production-wise. Uh, so two more, at least two more videos coming out this month. So uh, until next time. Greetings!